Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want you to know right now that God loves you so much It's where he's not going to allow any of your enemies to get away with the evil that they committed against your life. God controls the spiritual realm. Therefore, your enemy's sleep has been taken away. They can't believe that they don't have rest. Somebody put down in the comment section below, no rest for the wicked. See, we love our enemies. We pray for our enemies. But God also told us to warn the wicked. And we have been very gracious with warning them. But they refuse to listen. So a lot of your enemies have been given over to a reprobate mind. Let's go to scripture. We're going to go to Ezekiel 318. It says this, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. See, somebody put out in the comment section below, we warned you. See, we warned you. Amen. We warned the wicked because God instructed us to warn the wicked. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to know right now that their sleep has been disturbed. They no longer have peace. Amen. And no matter what they do, unless they repent, they're going to continue to live in denial and live in a false reality. Let's talk about that. Amen. Let's talk about that real quick. Let, let's go there. Let's go there real quick. Okay. So, denial. Some people say, well, <clears throat> explain to me what denial means. Well, denial is to refuse to admit the truth or reality about something. So, your enemies refuse to admit that you are the truth. Somebody put down the comment section below, I am the truth. They refuse to admit that God is doing works and blessings over your life. See, your reality, which is what's really going on, amen, is not false reality. God has truly blessed you. He's truly leveled you up. He's truly took you higher in this world, and it's made the enemy jealous. It made them hate you even more. So what they have to do is trick their minds to think that you're not successful. <laughs> uh, what the enemy have to do is make it seem like you are not on that level when really your enemies is not on that level. Amen. They are living in a false reality. Somebody put down in the comment section below. My enemies are living in a false reality. Now, let's see what false reality is, right? It says a false reality is a belief or perception that is not true or real, but instead considered to be so. So what they believe about you, amen, is not real, but in their minds, amen, they believe it to be. See, let's take your family for an example, right? <clears throat> your family don't think that you're a woman or a man of God. Amen. But really you are. But in their minds, they use denial to protect themselves from what? Having what? Anxiety, fear. Because your success, amen, you breaking the generational curses puts fear in your enemies. All right? So they're using denial as a defense coping mechanism <clears throat> to protect yourself from having fear. You understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? All right. Because by them seeing you as a loser, by them putting it in their mind, amen, that you're not successful, they can get rest. By them living in a false reality and tricking themselves, amen, 
like you are not anointed, amen, it makes them feel better. They don't live in fear this way. That's why they ghost you, amen? A lot of people ghost you because they do not want to accept the reality that God is showing them. They don't want to accept the truth. Somebody put down in the comment section below, face the truth. So they'll ghost you and they'll go off to a different place to not have to look at the works of God. But they don't know that you are the light of the world and you can't be hid. Amen. Somebody put on the comment section below. I am the light of the world. The Bible says a city that cannot be hid. You can't be hid. So it don't matter if they ghost you, hide, <laughs> go this, go this way, go that way. You're still going to shine. Amen. And this is what your enemies can't deal with. Now, let me break this down for you. Right. Isaiah 48, 21 says this. Or 22 says this. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. So, brothers and sisters, you disturb their peace and you disturb your wicked enemy's program. All right? Understand that. And there is no peace and no rest for them. All right? Now, I want to talk about the Most High God. Right. God is over the spiritual realm. OK. When an enemy goes to sleep. Right. The most high God will take his sleep away from him. Amen. What happens when you don't get enough rest? What do you become? Irritable, stressed out. Amen. Angry. Right. And really. These things is what's happening to your enemies. All right. Now, I'm going to take you to scripture to show you proof that God will take the sleep away from people who come against his children. All right. Let's go there. We're going to go to Daniel 6.18. All right. Now, before I go to Daniel 6.18, to give you context of what's happening here, right? Daniel was about to get thrown into the lion's den, okay? And the reason why is because it was a decree that was put in place for no one to serve the Most High, right? And Daniel, so the governors and stuff came up with a plan to uh, bring the decree to King Darius. And Daniel said, I'm not listening to you guys. I'm going to still go up and pray to the Most High. So Daniel went up and prayed to God three times. And because of this, he was thrown into the lion's den. All right. Now, King Darius saw favor in Daniel. Amen. And what happened was once... Daniel got thrown into the lion's den, his sleep was taken away. He couldn't rest. So he had to follow the decree because he put it in place. But I'm going to take you to scripture now to show you how his sleep was taken away when an anointed one of God is in danger. All right. That's what I want you to know, brother. Listen, when you are in danger, God will remove the sleep from your enemies. Until you are out of harm's way. Okay. And if they don't repent. Understand this. They must repent. For what they've done. All right. Then they will face judgment. Okay. Now let's go there. Uh, Daniel 6. 18 says this. Then the king went to his place. To his palace. And passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. And his sleep went from him. See? He couldn't sleep. Why? Because of the guilt. Amen. And he knew the power of God. Amen. He knew that Daniel was anointed by the Most High. So he knew 
that Daniel was in danger. All right. So the most high took his sleep away. All right. Let's see what it says now. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the dens of lions. So he went in haste. He rushed there. You want to know why? If something would have happened to Daniel, then he would have been held accountable. He would have faced judgment. All right, let's keep going. And it says this. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and have shut the mouths of the lions, that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocence was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. So Daniel said to the king, listen, I'm innocent. Amen. God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions in the lion's den. Amen. And listen, I have done no hurt. I have done nothing wrong. These people lie. I mean, I mean, these people um, brought up these things to catch me up and have me go against God. They tried to trick me and go against my God, but I have done nothing wrong. Amen. So let's now see what the king is going to do. So it says this. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in God. You see that, brothers and sisters? That's powerful. When you're in danger, when the enemy is trying to hurt you and harm you, what should we do? Do like Daniel. Believe in God. He believed that he was going to make it out the lion's den. Amen. And it says this. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, children, wives, and a lion had the mastery of them. All right. And break the pieces of every uh ever, and they came at the bottom of the den. All right. Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. And steadfast forever in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even until the end. Come on, let me get that man that's powerful. So, King Darius made a decree that all men should worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see that? See, brothers and sisters. This is what your enemy should do. Amen. They need to repent for how they treated you. They need to come back to reality and accept that God chose you. Accept that you are the chosen one of God and be serious and uplift his name. For God choosing you instead of trying to hide and be a demonic force, because what's going to happen is they're going to continue to stay in this place and this is their judgment. Let me go there. Psalms 55. Let me go there. Yeah. So it says this. Uh, Psalms. 55, 22 says this, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved, but thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. 
bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. See that? If you're wicked, you're not going to live out half your days. If you're deceitful, you're not going to live out half your days. That's why your enemies is not getting rest. Oh, that's a breakthrough. That's why they are constantly going back and forth. Because brothers and sisters, stress will destroy you. Amen. And they won't live out half their days. So if they were supposed to make it to, you know, 60, they ain't, listen, they're only going to make it to 30. They're not going to live out their full life term. And that's the truth. All right. Don't play with God. God is no joke. And with that said, stay righteous, brothers and sisters. All praises to the most high. God don't play about you.